Hello! Right, I'm going to do a tech deck on my Elf Overrun deck. Um, this isn't how to make a deck, this is more this is the kind of deck that I have made. I'm going to have to strip down now that M12 is coming out and the ones before M12. So, we will start off with the land. It is 20. That sounds a bit low, but it could even be a bit high for an Elf deck. It's worked for me, I've been taking them out and they've been going quite well. So, we're going to start with creatures. First creature is a Lanoir Elf. Oh, shiny light. Uh, it's basic Lanoir Elf. There's four of them, and tap one, add mana. It's a 1-1 creature that makes mana. You can jump block with it if you need to. Then Viridian Emissary. That's your jump blocker. It's a two drop for a 1-1, one, one, but when he dies, he goes land grabbing. Can't argue with that. There's four of those. Then we have two Copperhorn Scouts. Now, the reason why I've got the Copperhorn Scouts is because of their ability. When they attack, you untap all other creatures you control. So when you've tapped your Lanora Elves, or what we'll get to later on, you then do that in your main phase. You go into your attack phase. You just throw a Copperhorn Scout into the mill. And then you get to retap your creatures again for more mana. I mean, you can't argue with that, can you? Then we've got three Azura's Archers. Three of them, uh, yeah, they're one drops for one twos with reach. I mean, well, it's brilliant. And they get plus three against blocking flying creatures. So it's a really, really good flying defense. Then we get into the Elvish Arch Druids. Four of them, they're pretty much the key, well, half the key to the deck if you're just going for creatures. They give all other elves plus one plus one. Lovely. And you tap it and you get one mana for every other elf creature you've got. Yeah, we'll be having some of that. So that with the Copperhorn Scout and all the mana you're getting from the Lanwright Elves. It's just insane. Then we've got the Overon part of the deck. Azura's Renegade Leader. There's only two in because he's legendary. You don't want to pull him too often. You don't want to pull him until mid-game. And then you've got your Elves on the table. You hit the Overrun. And you've got the Regenerate ability. So you're going to have a lot of mana, hopefully. And you go in for smashing him in the face. Now, this is when it all gets tricky. So... We leave the elves, and now we've got three Garuk's Hordes. What they do is you play with the top card of your deck, are revealed, and if it's a creature card, you can cast it from there. Well, you've got all this mana going spare, you can make loads, you can start cycling through your deck like mad. Then we've got a Soul Primordial Hydra. Now that's really there just to either win condition, uh, you make it into insane with trample, and you win, or you... Well, you just use it to draw out Doom Blades and Oblivion Rings and stuff like that. And like, ah, oh, I'll deal with that. Will you really? Okay, you deal with that right now. And then let me get my elves up. Now, this is when we get into the artifacts. This is when it gets really silly. So, you've got your Jar of Eyeballs. Your uh, Garuk Sword hasn't worked because you've hit a land or something like that. Uh, sorcery, something that isn't a creature. We got Jar of Eyeballs. Now you've been throwing other creatures like your Viridian Emissaries into your enemy to go get land. Well, their eyes, or the tokens that they make from dying on the Jar of Eyeballs, means that you can then cycle through your land, through your deck, and pull out something that you want, and then you get another chance of revealing the top card of your library, seeing if that's a creature, you can keep on moving. Same again with the Druidic Satchel. If you hit a land, then you can play that land and then keep on going through, taking more creatures off the top and just pulling them out. Next artifact is Tower of Calamities. Now this is sick in this game because, oh no, it's a four and then you've got to pay eight and tap it to destroy a creature. Well, when you're making 16 land a turn or 16 mana a turn, that's nothing. You can get rid of some big fatties that way. Each turn you destroy something that's uh, strength 12 or less when you've got the mana to do it. It really does help. Now, this is the other bit. While you're throwing elves into the opponent to get them killed, to put onto the put eyeballs onto the jar of eyeballs, or to chump block early game and stuff like that, you've then got Creeping Renaissance, which comes out. It's a five, and what you do is it says, choose a permanent type, return all cards of chosen type from your graveyard to your hand. Well, your permanent type is creatures. Oh, I'll have all my creatures back into my hand, please. And then you've got the mana to cast them back onto the battlefield because of all the elves you've got before you've got to discard down. 
it, it's sick. I mean, mid game, if you're playing a long game and you've put loads of creatures cards in, then that turn you're just putting five, six creatures back onto the battlefield. And then it's got flashback, a seven mana cost. Mm, it's a bit high. Not when you're playing elves. Then we've got the two doubling chance. Now that, well, that goes for more elves. <laughs> you've got a couple of um, elvish arch druids, a garuk's horde, and a few Lanowar elves on the table. Bam, you've just doubled your army. It is insane. Then we've got Descendant's Path, which is something I was trying out before I had to demolish this deck, and I think I'm definitely keeping this, and it's gone into my Knight EDH deck. Now, what that one does is, at the beginning of your upkeep, you reveal the card from the library, and if it shares a type, e.g. Elves, you can put it on the battlefield for free. There we go. And then last but not least, we have Four Fogs, which, if you're playing Mono Green, just play Fog. That's all it is. So yeah, a 60 card deck. A side deck, I tend to do things, whatever's going strong at the at the time, uh, depends on whether it's token decks or uh, lots of flying, whatever I feel. You can put a Stinger Fling of Spiders in instead of um, the Azura's Archers, put another Azura's Archer in, or you can put your Fatties in with lots of Trample, anything you like really. So that is about it. I hope you enjoyed it. This is kind of more for me than anything because this... Um, yeah, this kind of uh, is is a bit of a memory for me now. It's going to have to be stripped down. A lot of it's still in play. So I still might be able to play a few bits and pieces and remake the elves. I mean, the Elvish Arch Druids in M13. Lanner elves are out, but we've got the Arbor elves. All that kind of stuff. So, yeah, tell me what you think about the deck. What, what you would have changed about it. Um, yeah, comments below. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.